Hello everyone. Today we will talk about granularity in marketing mixed modeling. As we are living in an era that is characterized by stricter and stricter regulations when it comes to data privacy, making any measurement method that is based on consumer tracking almost impossible, it is very important that any measurement method that is going to replace these methods be granular. And today I would like to show you how marketing mix modeling can be very granular. In the past, granularity in marketing mix modeling was very hard to achieve for a number of reasons. For example, data was not as available as today. And even when available, it lacked a lot of granularity and had lots of challenges when it comes to accuracy. Methodologies used in marketing mix modeling were very basic. RAM was expensive. Computation power was slow. So all these elements have changed now, which allows marketing mix modeling to be much more granular. Why marketing mix modeling evolved and what makes granularity possible today? Two things I'm gonna talk about. The first one is the availability of data. The second one is the evolution of the methodology when it comes to marketing mix modeling. Granular data feeds. Data granularity could be achieved thanks to the availability of three types of data, the variables, the regions, and the customer segment. When we focus on the first element, which is the variables, now we can have different cuts of the same variable. For example, we can have the creative, the day part, the length, the format, the delivery, the campaign objective, the ad ID, the placement, all these elements are today made available to us by a major platform in order to be able to assess their impact on sales or any other chosen KPI. The second element that allows us to achieve granularity in marketing mix modeling is the availability of what we call regional data. And here regional data could refer to many things. It could be media regions, it could be DMAs, it could be products, uh, it could be stores, it could be accounts. And here what can happen is that instead of only modeling over national sales, we are now allowed to model over more than one region, which can help us get a better read onto how certain media activities have impacted specific regions as opposed to the other one. And this could only add to the granularity of the results that could be achieved using marketing mix modeling. Customer segment is another component that can help us achieve granular results in marketing mix modeling. So here the idea is to group your customers in homogeneous group that share the same behavior and apply your marketing mix modeling to groups of customers or customer segments. What we gain here is that your marketing mix modeling will allow you to understand what marketing and media activities work best on specific segments. So you can leverage those findings and you can better target your marketing efforts going forward in the future and improve your media and marketing planning based on a better understanding of your customer segments. Here we are going to cover three measurement techniques that allow marketing mix modeling to have the granularity sought by marketeers. The first one is poor regression. The second one is nested models. And the third one is log linear. Let's start by poor regression. One of the specificities of the poor regression is that it allows us to have additional points. In econometrics, having additional points allows us to have more robust measures. T-stat, p-value are likely to improve. Earlier on, we talked about the granularity of the data feeds, and one of the components of the triangle we have presented is the regions. Here, when we get that granular data, we can apply poor regression in order to understand better what is happening at the regional level. Measures that are impossible to get at the national level could be easily measured when we look at regional data because it presents more granularity and we stand more chances to get a measure when we use more granular regional data. Today's media landscape is characterized by the coexistence of many channels and many platforms. Your measurement framework needs to acknowledge the richness of this ecosystem 
and be able to measure the interaction between your paid, owned, and earned media. That's why it's very important to use nested models in order to have a holistic framework of measurement. How does my offline activity impact my search? How does my social activity impact my search? So all this needs to be estimated at the same time in order to come up with the best course of action when it comes to optimizing your media, while taking into consideration the direct and indirect impact of every single media channel. Last but not least, log linear. This technique is much more realistic than its linear counterpart. Let's take the example of the impact of price and distribution variables in a linear setting. If the price is equal to zero, there is a base, there is still a base in a linear model. If a distribution is equal to zero, there is also still a base. Even if my product is not distributed anywhere, my linear model says that there is a base in my sales. Obviously, this is not realistic, and that's why moving from the linear setting to the log linear setting will allow to overcome this challenge by integrating the notion of relative and incremental variables. The other advantage of using log linear is the possibility to measure the impact of pairs of synergies. And this, again, can only add to the level of granularity that you can have from your marketing mix models. Before I finish, I couldn't emphasize more how important it is to have good quality data to be able to get to the granularity that is sought by your marketeer or by the brand that you are working for. If we don't have good quality data, it is impossible for us to extract any granularity, no matter how good is the technology that you have at hand. Looking at synergy effect, halo effects, direct and indirect impacts will be almost impossible if you don't have granular data and accurate data in the first place. My final tip of the day is to set the expectations right. Whether you are working in-house, delivering your marketing mix modeling project to the brand teams in-house, or whether you are working in an agency and you will be delivering your marketing mix modeling projects to the brand, it's very important to be honest when it comes to the level of granularity that you can reach from your MMM exercise. Obviously, this granularity will depend on the granularity and the quality of the data. If you think that the granularity of the data or the quality of the data is not good enough for you to answer all the business questions that you have at hand, you need to be honest and you need to be voicing it over. And let's make it an agile process. Your first iteration doesn't have to be that much elaborate. If you can provide some leads on your ROI, contribution, sales drivers, that is good for a, for a first iteration. Then later on, you can add layers of granularity as data is available. Thank you for watching our videos. I hope this video was particularly useful to you. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.